Hello, hello, there we go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Rob. Hi, morning. It might be a hot one today. I don't know, it feels like it. Rob, uh, I'm going to sign up for the next session, but uh, I may or may not uh, be attending the first one because we have a conflict with another event here. Just let you know. So we'll, okay. I will Thanks. try to Thanks. try to yeah. Okay. But if you want to do the lesson, you know, I'll um, I'll give you a critique online. Yeah, I try. Maybe I can do it earlier <laughs> with your reference. Uh, on Sunday, I can do that before the class, maybe. Or I just audit the lesson during. Um, anyway, so okay, that's uh, why we haven't signed up yet. Uh, but I will try to figure it out today. Okay. Thank you. That's for the masters, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I um, I'll check out the schedule, but um, uh, this one will be sure to repeat. Yeah. yeah. This is very good class. I learned so much from various masters and you. Yeah, I love this class too. <laughs> yeah, this one's uh, replacing the landscape yeah. as the uh, the class to take. So I want to keep uh, making it. It you no. Know, <clears throat> You know, I, sometimes I wonder whether we should do watercolor masters or just masters. You know, I know we mm -hmm. do occasionally copy a, a, an oil painting, and sometimes that throws people a little bit. I, I know it, it can, but you know, I think it's still helpful because you know you see the composition and yeah how they designed it. And Exactly. So this is before I get caught up in our in our talk. Let me push record because this is what I keep doing lately. I'll get talking to people and then I forget to hit the recording record in progress. I did this yesterday. Gosh, I can't believe I'm still doing that. <laughs> Sorry, I just felt like I just forgot and then I remember and I go, okay, I'm stopping right now. <laughs> just keep doing. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, um, Oh, yeah. So oil, so copying oil paintings is okay with you guys? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I think we, we shouldn't uh, differentiate the uh, art. You know, when we study, it's a study, so. Exactly. Yeah. And you have acrylic artists in the group. Hello? Uh, I'll talk. Well, was that, we have what artists in the group? Acrylic. Yeah, acrylic. Acrylic yeah, can do whatever you want, really, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, look at this. Wow, you guys are so enthusiastic. Look at this. 19 people in here already. We barely started the class. I, I have other classes where I, I have like <laughs> half that and half the people don't show up. Okay, so let's see now. Um, let's go over to, now well, let's do a little screen sharing here. Okay. Uh, right. And, it's on the email, isn't it? Oh, did I mess this up? Oh, yeah, there it is. So, thank you, uh, Claire, for sending me this. Like, I decided to use this. Just, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, there's no, not really any videos. I do have some uh, a video with some pictures on it, but so I mean, there probably are, but they're just I couldn't find them on YouTube, or I, I did scans and I couldn't find it. So, but she is a, a real great. Great master here. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me hit another button here. Okay. Now, so 
She was born in 1870, wow, uh, into an artistic family in Wisconsin. And her grandfather, her mother was an artist, her grandfather was, went to the Royal Academy in London. Uh, so did my grandfather. Pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and then she studied at the Chicago Art Institute, or the Art Institute of Chicago. That's where my mother studied. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and later went to New York and studied with Milt William Mary Chase. That's, no, I'm just joking. No. But, um, yeah, if you don't know who William Merritt Chase is, we should probably copy him. He's sort of, uh, you know, he went to Sar he went to school, the same school that Sargent went to, and paints very much in the same way that Sargent and Soroya and Zorn and some of these artists, they went to this. So, so anyway, she's from that family of artists. You know, when you're, when you're taught into a certain kind of uh, school of thinking, it's, you can see it in the artwork and you'll be, if you like that, if you like that kind of thinking, you're, you'll be pulled toward that type of artwork. So she's, uh, she's in that vein. She's sort of in that vein of art. I, I, it's hard to explain. It's a, it's because even in, even in, even when you talk about painters, there's different schools of thought in painting. So she, she returned to Milwaukee and uh, taught at the art of the Chicago Art Institute, and the, the art, I keep calling it the Chicago, the Art Institute of Chicago. And then she got this offer to go to Santa Fe on the Santa Fe Railroad. Um, isn't it funny? These these little events really change your life. So an opportunity to paint murals for the Santa Fe Railroad. Um, so she went to Santa Fe through the Grand Canyon where she, you know, it's interesting too. It says she went to the, I've never seen her do a painting of the Grand Canyon, but I'd like to see that really. Cause you know, Edgar Payne is mostly famous for that one. It says she returned there many times on artistic tricks. I'd love to see her Canyon type paintings. Um, so William Keith, now William Keith is another really great, I wouldn't call him a California Impressionist, but I think, I don't think he was anyway. I, I recognize the name, I, I think I, I, th I think I understand, I think I've seen his artwork, but pretty sure I have. But how about that? He studied, um, uh, Elmer Wachtel studied with him and decided to introduce the two, and then we got married. So, how about that? Um, Marion and Elmer married in Chicago in 1904. Her paintings were signed Marion Cavanaugh Wachtel. So, wow, she, she predated a lot of what, you know, people who are keeping their names by a long time. So anyway, um, the artistic couple maintained homes in the LA area right here, right by my house, over here in uh, Mount Washington area. I've actually seen this house, it's really cool. And then they also had one in the Royal Seco area of Pasadena. I'm not sure where that one is. Um, I am. Yeah? Where is yeah. it? Yeah, it was uh, next to me where I live now. Oh, you're <laughs> kidding. No, it's unrecognizable now from oh, what it was, but um, it's just right on the edge of Parkview and and uh, Lida. Parkview. Oh wait. Oh okay. And Lida, I know. Wow. I oh, I live around the corner from. Oh, you guys live right around there. See? Yeah. <laughs> she was probably painting that area before there was a Rose Bowl. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> so I mean, imagine what it must have looked like back then. But um, yeah, the couple through uh, traveled throughout the Southwest, and she chose watercolor. It says perhaps not to compete with her husband, and became known as the best watercolorist in California. So she must have loved it. Obviously, she did. Um, I don't know. Maybe. 
who who knows what the uh, arrangement there was, but you know, if you have, I do notice that if you look at her oils and his oils, they look really similar. So I could see how maybe they made the choice because they showed together quite a bit. And maybe they didn't want people to get mistaken, or I, I don't I, know if there was some sort of sexist thing there. I don't know. Who I thought he it? wouldn't let her use oils. So that's. I, I don't know the story, so I don't know. Is, is that is that actually true, or I don't know? I don't know. I read it someplace that he um, she only took up oils after he died. Um, that could be apocryphal. I don't know. But huh. That's what I read. Well, I don't know either. Signs of the times. Okay, so Marion. Uh, maintain a toneless or remained a toneless with no examples of her work even hinting at impressionism huh okay uh her her favorite subject the tall eucalyptus which we're going to do and that's see it's a very toneless approach it's not this broken impressionism approach it, it's um more, usually more muted and, and not so uh, saccharine in color. So I should say, no, saccharine is probably the wrong word. Um, how about uh, much more muted in color, not, not so highly pigmented. All right, so um, I'm sure everybody, yeah. She, she loved this long undulating line, favored by the, um, Art and Wavo artists like let's say Mocha. So look for that in Mocha. They have these really, really long, elegant, beautiful lines. So she was popular on both coasts and exhibited widely after her husband died in 1929. She temporarily stopped, but took it back up in 1931, um, painting the hillsides of the San Gabriels right here and she passed away in 1954. And so I also have this, I mean, I could show you pictures, but I thought, well, why don't we just watch this? Can you guys see this video? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I, I didn't know whether it switched or not, so let's see. Do you want to listen to the classical music I have on there? <laughs> He loved painting those trees to the, um, these uh, Monterey Cypress, kind of common theme. So it looks like her oil paintings. I had a chance to buy a quick sketch once and she didn't. I didn't. There's a no, there's a watercolor. You see how these this is this is called tonalism where where you just have these more muted tones next to tones. They tend to look very much like this painting right here. It was still popular in California Impressionism. They they, they get they get sort of mixed in with each other. But the tonalists are a little bit different than like they, they have this other director called the luminous, which we'll, we'll talk about later. But. I looks like right here, Pasadena. Is that what it looked like? The Arroyo with no, <laughs> just a dried riverbed? Wow. That's a really famous painting right there. I'm pretty sure that's watercolor now. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell which ones are watercolor or oil from her. Beautiful. She did lots of these paintings too of the um, Sierra Nevadas. 
again, there's that, wow, late day, that's, that's phenomenal. Bob, would you put the site where you found these? These are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, pretty these phenomenal. Things, yeah. Uh, yeah. The oils, the, these oils look more, I, I would call this impression, you know, impressionism, not, not so much tonalism. You see the difference? The, the much more saturated tones, uh, tones, uh, and broken color right next to each other. Somebody probably has a a way of distinguishing the two. I, I, I'm probably both. <laughs> I don't even know what I, I do. Impressionism or expressionism or tonalism or I love it all. So anyway, yeah, let me get that to you. Uh, here it is. Copy. And I'll put that in our chat. Okay. Oops. There it is. Okay. Thank so, you. You're welcome. No, oh, I, I, one thing I just wanted to quickly point out is that she wasn't, she, I mean, she tended to love these eucalyptus, and you know they're not native to here, right? So, um, I noticed a lot of people really don't like the eucalyptus because they're not native to here. I've heard them called weeds, <laughs> tall weeds. But anyway, I, I, I love painting myself. Um, it, it was a favorite theme of hers. So, so what we can do here is just, now I'm gonna have to kind of move my thing back and forth because this is, this is such a tall composition. I can't fit exactly the whole thing in here. But what we can do here is, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Let's see later. Oh, this is what I here, sorry. Uh, let's do a, a value. She's got this kind of, you know, almost like a, a letter S there or something. Oh, 
Hold on the center. Some hills in the back. Some trees here. And so this actually boils down to a Fastilier theme, which is a popular theme. It's this. You have a big mass here, and you counter it with a smaller mass over here. See? And, and so, it's, a, it's an old theme that's been done many times. Usually it's horizontal, though. So typically when you see this theme, you'll see like an old Dutch master or something do this, and it'll be more like this. Um, not something like this. Could be a tree, could be a windmill, could be all kinds of things, and then there'll be something in the background over there sort of balancing it. I'm being really obvious about the whole thing. They're not nearly this obvious. You know, they'll, have, they'll, they'll do it with a beautiful tree here, and, you know, there'll be hills and whatever, but, you know, you'll, you'll see this big mass being countered by this. So that's generally what she's doing. It's just, just called, you can look this up too if you like, it's called steel yard or George calls it steelyard. I think it's named after someone with the last name of steelyard. So I, I don't know the history of it. I just use it all the time. You can do lots of variations on it. She she does lots of variations on this. Okay, so we have this eucalyptus tree mass and a darker one here and some stuff and the path. We've got a okay. Now with your oppression blue and, and cadmium red. Um, how about we do the this first, whoops, it's pretty dark. It's very light figure. I think probably just paint it right over. Something very light down here. Well, that's drying. Got a little lighter through here. I got. And um, some very, very, very light mountains in the background. There, I see them. Okay, now we can come into this pretty dark. And all I'm caring about here, I'm definitely not trying to get any kind of detail, just value, that's all. So, that'll be the light part, not the dark. Say we could just, I think, uh, lump all of this into that, and this too. <clears throat> Behind that, a little bit lighter. I'll go right over all this, and even this 
half. And um, so even the lights on this tree are darker than anything in this mountain back here. So I'm going to paint the lights on the tree fairly dark. Really blue things back here, that would be fun. And we do have some little, little value changes around the sides of the path. This gets quite a bit darker in the path. That makes the path stand out a little bit more. And We have these much darker darks in here now. Back down on the lower left hand side of a lot of these masses of foliage is where you're going to get your most of your shadow. Most of your, your dark shadow. Your, and I guess instead of thinking of it as shadow, maybe think of it as dark, light and dark. rather than light and shadow. Because what I mean is that it, it's it's darker than anything else. We've got this oak tree back here in front of this, and it's it's darker. And we also have these subtle shadows on here that are a little bit darker. Which means I have to even get darker with the oak tree. Oh boy. Hope I might get myself in trouble. We get pretty darn dark in here. We might have to keep hitting these. Even these these shadows up here are not quite as dark as these ones down here, so she really knows how to walk your eye from shadow up into light very, very gradually. This is one of my favorites of this. It's just so beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for recommending it. I, I went and tried to find the highest um, resolution one I could find. Found one a little bit higher, but not great. It, it, it's not bad. It's a, it's got what we need. Okay, and then I think we're looking pretty good as far as a value steady goes. Maybe a little bit darker in here. Showing us that I know that's got the house. Got a little darker through here, showing us the the path. Okay, now let's go into a color study. And again, we're just going for notes here, so let's don't try to draw too much detail. Real easy to do with her. You get lost in those trees. And this.
extend the bottom a little bit. Okay. And we have um, a hillside coming here. It's actually, if halfway is there, it's pretty, it's pretty low. It's down here. All right, and mountains. A few other things. Okay. How about some ultramarine blue? Oops. Ultramarine blue up in here. And as we come down, getting more, I'm going to try lemon if that's warm enough. If that's not warm enough, we'll go to, we'll go to uh, maybe. Give a little cad. Let's see. A little bit of warmth in that sky. That's too much. I think it's more of a cadmium. Mountains back here it looks like we have more um, ultramarine with the faintest touch of a little bit of um, um, gosh why aren't the words coming to my head I hate that I can never remember the names of these colors uh, magenta I'll just sit there and go, um, 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 and I, I know what it is. I say it like 20 times a day. I just can't, like, remember it. It must be some sort of... I notice a lot of artists are like that, too, so... Okay, so anyway, um, in the shadows up here... You know, why don't we do the lights first? I'm sorry. Let's do the lights first. You know They're what it is? It's what? verbally, uh, those things are part of your left brain, and what you're doing is really right brain stuff. So it can oh. use each other. Some people can't talk at all when they're painting. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be one of those people. I didn't know how I was going to teach. I tried, and whew. I remember Richard Bunkle got me a job at Art Center while I was still teaching there. I mean, while I was still going there, excuse me. And, and that was part of, they believed in that. They believed in learning how to teach by teaching. You know, learning how to, everything was hands-on, everything. And also, I loved the workshops back then because in a workshop, you'd have the, the, uh, eighth term students and the first term students and sometimes students that weren't even in the school yet and they'd all be working together and a lot and it was just understood that the eighth term students would help the other students and, and it was just a you get to know people and it was great it was so harmonious all right so anyway let's go into here i'm going to get a little bit more i've got the um ultramarine blue and a little bit of Cad yellow and cad red. I think I needed some cad red in there. Let's try that. Something like this. Because it's darker. A little more orange. A little more red than that. 
Come on. Do a little more red. So see, we call this tonalism. I think I'm going to stay away from these blue shadows. We'll just paint this on the lights, but keep. Well, we won't be able to get those blue shadows if we keep painting this over the blue. I'm going to go with the um, ultramarine blue in the shadows. It got really dark. Just oh, it's really light. <laughs> All right. Just to feel quite off. A lot of really quite blue things back in here too. So let's make a note of that. Quite, quite blue. That just straight ultramarine. Just want to notice that. We do have a little house in there. That's really nice. All in shadow. We're just going to put a shadow down there. She had a red roof. You know, I don't know if we're going to get to all this detail. We'll see. Her paintings are so deceiving. You look at them and you think, oh, okay, no problem. And then you get in there and you're like, oh, wait, we got problems. We did this last time, remember? Okay, so with. Uh, with the green grass, I'm just going to use yellow, cad yellow, and uh, Prussian blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of, um, a little more ultramarine blue in that, so, so to bring it down in tone. Oh, right over that. There, there, that was supposed to be my oak tree, huh? Oak tree is much warmer than that. I'm going to add orange. So I've got cad yellow, cad red, and ultramarine blue. Let's see how that goes there. A little warmer. Maybe a little greener than that. And then, of course, in front of that, we have a, a, a hill, a little mound of dead grass or something that's very similar to this color. A lot of that brown. So again, it's just cad red, cad yellow, ultramarine blue. You're making, you know, you're you're going to be making tons of tones here, tons of tones, <laughs> tons of tons of tones. These, these tones get darker down here, but lighter back there. It's a yeah, it's a it's a similar color to this, but I just added more water to get it lighter. I'm way back here on the hillside, a very light. Um, if it gets too too reddish, and you need to mute it. Basically, you're just making you're making an orange, and you're adding blue to it. That's a complementary color. And I have a hair in my eye that won't stop. Stop it. You ever get like an eyelash in your eye, and you're just trying to paint here? Okay. Yeah, that's better. I think. Let's see. Um. For my path, I'm seeing a lot of violets. I'm going to try violet, which make that out of um, magenta and ultramarine blue, and then add yellow. Let me 
gets quite quite blue back here. And then up the, up here she adds more yellow to it. So again, we're going to go for that orange here, and it's made out of cad red, cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. <clears throat> Guess I'm wondering if we should paint the. Uh, oh. Let's just get into the. Let's just do this, and then we'll get in. We'll solve a lot of these extra problems in the painting. So you make an orange with cad yellow, cad red, and then you're adding the ultramarine blue. For she has different yeah the ultramarine blue for the uh, to to gray it. Feel free to give yourself some variations on that color. Maybe a little bit of I'm seeing little little touches of green in there, little touches of red in there, or orange. See some oranger things in there. So feel free to vary that color. We'll do much more of that in the finish. And now I'm coming in with just ultramarine blue added to that color. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about branches and everything at this point. I do notice the shadows get lighter up here and darker down here. So we'll, we'll have to uh, make a note of that. A shadow over here is very, very light shadows. And that's about all I do for a value study or for a color study. So basically, her light is coming from behind the tree, right? Where all no, the light's coming from in front of the tree. Oh, and making, okay. Like this. So I thought since it was more yellow behind the tree that the sun was coming from the back. It's a really low light. <clears throat> so okay. while this is in shadow, the tops of the trees are catching the light. It's one of my favorites. And right. so, yeah, the lights, I, I guess if I had to draw a light, it would, it would be coming from like here. Right, okay. Like that. I see. So, more in that area. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. It's a very low light. It's just, it, it wouldn't last that long. She certainly didn't sit there and paint it while I was. She couldn't have. It, it's just, it's falling at about. You might get the light that way right there for five minutes. At, you know, in June when you have the longest days, uh, you might be able to get it that way there for fifteen minutes or something. So. She was quite good at making things up, though. Believe me, she could. Uh, she could have done this out of her head. Okay. I mean, honestly, she's one of the most underrated, and and I hope at some point in California impressionism, she gets she gets to be looked at. I mean, I don't. Maybe she is. I know that she she is a, a big name in California Krishna, but you know most people think of uh, William Wentz or um, uh, Edgar Payne or one of these artists. I I I look at her work and I go, wow! I mean, she could have really painted with either any of them, really. 
She could have schooled any of them, actually. <clears throat> Hopefully they all schooled each other, and they probably did. Okay. That's what I like. I like to learn from my friends, but it, unfortunately some of my friends that I went to school with have gotten kind of crabby. <laughs> Uh, I think that was very worth doing those those um, little studies. That uh, really help. This is so big. I'm gonna I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on getting me a, a rod where I can move my camera up and down. Right now I, I kind of can I can do that, but it's gonna be shaky. I'm, I'm working on something. I'm, I'm going to rig this thing up here even more. Okay, let's get to drawing. All right, so um, I'm, I'm going to judge this about you know being around this far from the side, and love this sort of S kind of curve going here. I might, I might be a little large on that. See, I'm just coming up over there, there. We have this hillside coming in. I'm just gonna kind of going for more of a contour here. Got this sort of this inner, like a hole going through it right here. I'll just that can help getting those negative spaces. If we have a few little negative spaces in here too, just just drawing yourself out a few little positions. See, those will be in the light, so I might have to bring my uh, pill down here. Things like that. Really. We've got these two. That's math of trees here. Let me pull that up for you. This mass of trees here, and I'm going to say that path starts around there and switches back that way, and then comes back this way. Look at that way. We have a little, <clears throat> a little house. tree going here. And then we have a, a little mound of stuff there and a mound here. Mound here with some things going up over the path. And this should be kind of flat here. Side. So maybe I'll put the side there. Got a little roof going there. Okay. Even this has a little hole. Some branches.
more good. First big branch here. There's that little hillside. I'll move this down a little further. Yeah. Then back here we just have little trees and landscape, and then probably the San Gabriel Mountains. I'm not going to get into too. I mean, we, we could we could really get into drawing every single one of these little things out. I usually solve it with the brush. I'll show you. So we know where things are, and. If you do wet in the wet, we'll be sorry. <laughs> I mean, too much wet in the wet. Uh, I think we should wet down the sky first. Oh, how did my brush get so dirty? I must have picked up something. Okay. Gonna add a little bit of water down here. Just... Hopefully, this helps. And then I'm going to add ultramarine blue to the top here. Pretty aggressive. I think I don't want it to go over this too much. But you got to get it kind of through there. So oftentimes I'll just. If you guys hear some noise, sorry about that. They um, they're, they're resurfacing my parking lot here, so I'm just taking this off a little bit. Um, and then as we get down here, I want to go for more. I want to go for more um, yellows and oranges. So the lemon yellow and a little bit of. Cad yellow, yeah, that's a little too orange. Go. Green yellow. Very light. Just kind of mix it up in there. They might turn a little green when they transition into each other. That's fine.
it's very light in here. It's not. Yeah. Generally, like that. I pulled mine a little bit low. I, I think it's fine. And I, it, it's tempting to want to get in there and mix it. I, I would leave it. You'd be surprised when you put everything on top of it, it just flows. Okay. And she probably doesn't, yeah, she doesn't leave such a dramatically dark line as I do, but I'm going to leave it like this for instruction purposes. Now, uh, so back here for these purple mountains, and that's way too dark. Going the lavender, so I'm gonna really pull back on that color, that value, yeah. Back into there, and it does come in back. I'm just gonna pull right behind all of this, and then I'm gonna get blue in here, ultramarine blue, with no. No um, magenta in it. It's blue. Just let them go into each other. There's some little white things, little white houses in there if you want to leave those. Um, and just pull those whites. I got one up here in the foreground, a couple in the background. Good. I'll hit those darker ones later. And right behind this little, yeah. And you know, I should have hit the violet right through the trees. No biggie, we'll just hit those. A little yellow in that too. A little yellow sky in there too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for this whoop, sort of a, a gray green. For the light part of the tree. So you could just mix green and then and add a little bit of red to it. Should work. And it's got other colors vibrating around in there too, so I'm definitely seeing orange in there. So if you have anything orangish, oh, throw a little orange in there. It's a little dark. It's a darker value than you might think. And if you want to know how dark it is, just compare it to the sky. See how it silhouettes <coughs> from the sky? So it, and look how it silhouettes off this mountain. <coughs> so it's actually darker than you might think. Of course, nowhere near as dark as this tree. But it, I know I was getting a little fooled by it. So, And I, I'm getting, um, I'm going to go with the ultramarine blue and a little bit of that green color in the shadow. This is the oak. I can 
zoom into this. Now that should be a little bit lighter than that though. You have these little light spots in there where you have uh, tree trunks. You know, feel free just to pull it out with your finger nail. I just chop my fingernails. <laughs> Don't want that that dark back there. I'm trying to lighten that up a little bit because it dried on me. If I sound like I'm yelling. I'm sorry. I got these heavy equipment right in my ear, and I can't even hear myself. I know you guys got the noise cancellation, so hopefully that's helping. Can you imagine complaining? Excuse me, um, I have classes. You sound fine, and we can't hear the background stuff. Oh, okay, good, good. Put, yeah, you're not yelling. I'm not yelling. <laughs> Just mix the kid yellow. Okay. Come back into some of these arrangements. That's laid in. Let's see what we got here. Now. I think we can go for the big tree. I don't know, do we want to do that first to last? How about we get all this covered? And then we'll go for the tree. That'll give it lots of time to, because right now my uh, my paper is kind of wavy. You know how hard that is to paint on. Even though it's dry, it's not dry, it's damp. But it's kind of wavy. Okay. Darker blues in here. That's way too dark. Just add water. I want those to be really blue. You gotta use a clean blue to get it like hers. Sure, there's nothing in it. Is that um, Prussian? Oh. Is that no, it's Prussian? ultramarine. Okay. Back here, just a little bit lighter. Not the um, this little hill here in the foreground. Which is redder or oranger. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong one, huh? Oh, there's one back here. Okay. One, two. Okay. We draw on there one. I got this one and this one. Oh yeah, and then there's that one. Okay, there's a hill here. That's what it is. And that's that little. We could paint right over that, I think. Ooh, we them all the way. Bob, how did you get that color again? Just brown. All I'm using is cad red, cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. Okay. Um, as you can see, 
It's got more orange in it than blue. Okay. So that's. So I just make orange out of the cad red, cad yellow, and then I add a little bit of blue to it. So I. Here's what I do. I, I, I got the cad red, and I got the cad yellow. So that makes me kind of orange. And then I add the blue to it. And that got way too cool. So I need more red than that. So it's just it's a balance between these three colors. Okay. Yeah, it all it always is. And mixing red on the surface. Which I don't think she did very much. So she gets such clean colors that I don't think she did that very much. It's, it's more muted than this, so I'm going to add more blue. So the blue will just gray it. These two. A lot of the same colors. Up here in the foreground, just gets quite a bit oranger and yellower. And then I just mix some blue into that, and that just craze it all down. Let's get darker. Up right here. It's darker and orange, oranger. I could just. Them sort of onto the road there a little bit. Hmm. And the green grass is maybe maybe the Prussian blue and the lemon yellow for the green. And then, you know, if I just put that straight down, it, it's probably too much. So I need to um, gray that with something in the red family, usually just red. And put that in there, something like that. patch back there. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, some of that green could have... These two, if they could come together, I'm just going to do it like this. Back here a little bit, but see if I can get it back. Oh, that was that house. I 
definitely want this in front of that. Um, it's kind of a violet gray back here, so I just take violet, which is magenta and ultramarine blue, and I add a little bit of complement to it, which would be yellow and orange, so yellow orange. And that's a little on the light side, and then lighten that up a little bit. And he gets all kinds, of, I see little violets in there and yellows in there, so she spices the color up. With a little bit of a little green guy in my thing. Um, yeah, it's a little, oops, I got a lot of green in there now. I see she's using this violet right around in here, kind of a blue violet. Nice color. She is a great colorist. I mean, really high, really high level. And for the time she was working, wow, that, that's, that really says something, because color theory, you know, um, I mean, I'm, I'm talking early on when she was working, she's, she's very high level to have known all this about color theory after her education, you know, her education was early on when color theory was only known amongst, you know, Monet and compadres, you know, so she must have got that information. Probably William Merritt Chase. Quite a great, he's quite a great to color Someone. Let's see now. Now I'm seeing this. This, this is a nice color, but the value is, needs to be darker to make my little road. So I was like, well, how come I keep having to get light with my road? Oh, because it's just dried, so the light. There we go. That darker. Now my road looks maybe a little light. So I'll throw a little wash on that later. And even this is pretty. Pretty light, and you throw a couple of these over it, yeah. So I'll throw. What color are you using? Um, it's just this orange right here. Okay, I'm just using red, yellow, and blue for all of this, really. But um, it's cad red, cad yellow, ultramarine blue, but I'm adding a lot more blue to it here to get it darker. That's, and it even needs to go darker. So to, to get that even darker, so you add more blue to it. And it gives me kind of a, a, a neutral color Because the orange and the blue will complement each other and they tend to gray. They, they don't tend to gray, they will definitely gray. I'll come back to that too. Let that dry up because this is on. Needs to be washed down a little bit. And oh, I only bought that sky down to there. I want a little bit of that yellow sky right here. Very light. And we have this mountain or this hill right here. It's got other colors right there too. Again, that's just red, yellow, and blue. See, she. Um, 
She makes a million colors out of three colors. And I'm telling you, she's a great color theorist. I mean, I locked right onto her paintings early on. I don't know why. Probably because I was so into color theory at the time. But I remember when I first saw her paintings, I'm like, oh, who is this? First of all, I was looking for someone working in watercolor at the time. But she's amazing all around. She's an all around amazing. I, I, I've never seen her portraits or anything. I've all, but she's all around great. I think okay. she has a, a self portrait that's oh really that you can see online. It's beautiful. Oh really? She did wow. A self portrait, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I, I do that. Right. Okay. So I think the way to do this. Many different, ways, many different plans of attack on this, but what I'm going to do is um, make myself some orangey color for those branches. What do you call them? Um, trunks. Uh, make yourself too much. You'll use it. Because you're going to use it on other things too. So cad yellow, cad red, make yourself a nice orange. Lots of yellow in there. And then throw a little bit of blue in there and that'll that'll gray it. Make this thing drippy enough here. And then I'm do I'm going to um, Might be a little bluer than that. Got a few other things. We got this beautiful one right here. <clears throat> Just paint it like that, and then. I'll start it off thin, and then I'll thicken it up. And these ones on the ends are great. Just, just do them really thin. I'm not going to try to get it exactly like them. Just this will help me get get uh, the general movement. See, I find that easier just to paint them in rather than drawing lines around everything. If you notice, my line doesn't exactly follow hers, and sometimes it's just easier. <laughs> when you're doing millions of branches, you know, I, I'm not going to try to make every one like hers. We'll be here all day, and there's really no reason. It's it's capturing this this mood she gets and 
this is what one thing that tonalism is so good at is capturing these really delicate, subtle moods. What was the brown color? How did you do that? I Which one? The tree branches. So that's just orange, cad red, and cad yellow. Uh -huh. And then I add a little ultramarine blue to it, Got it. Just to dull the color a little bit. That's what I thought. Thank you. Yeah. in there. Let's see. And then again, I'm using the same colors to do the light on the foliage, but you know, you can see where she adds a little bit of more orange, a little bit more green, yellow and, you know, which is a little more yellow to the color. So I'm going to I'm going to make, again, a whole lot of that color, that orange. I want you to over mix, make too much. You'll be happy you did. Or I should say, if you don't, you'll wish you did. <laughs> it's too much. And then figure out the color, figure out the color and value. What you can do is maybe do a little sample. Something like that. And I'm seeing greener versions of that too. So I could take the blue and add, you know, yellow to it. A little bit, a little greener. Maybe a little redder. Occasionally a little reddish accent to it. So it's in that family. That's all just red, yellow, and blue. But, you know, it's how you play it. It's how you, uh, what, what you decide to emphasize is a little bit more yellow. So, so I'm going to start by starting here. That's, no, it's pretty dark. Even the lights are pretty dark. I'm already regretting I didn't mix up enough color. ring blue as I go. Um, if you use a lot of water, remember it's going to dry um, a little, maybe a little too light. So keep that in mind. I can see she drew things out too with a very sort of orangey color. Can you see the little orange color around the outsides? She's doing a lot of this. I didn't really do that, but so it looks like she she draws it with some of this real so that that one might help you. I usually just go for it, but I think the luck can be learned from drawing this beautiful undulating line. That's what they called it. Word of the day. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I just looked up there, didn't see that. I didn't, I didn't notice I wasn't showing you that. Um, anyway, she's drawing with this kind of orangey. And she really uses a pretty loose line. It looks like tree branches when you're... I mean, it goes so much with the way she paints that you can't really see her line. It wouldn't surprise me if she didn't even draw with a pencil. She just drew the whole thing with a brush. Her confidence level is about as high as it gets. So that can really help. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's still not dark enough, is it? Wow. Just don't want this to feel like shadow. She gets pretty dark in those shadows, though. I have to. I wonder if she used white on some of them sometimes, like some of these inner branches, and then glazed over them to. I kind of doubt it, but because she's such a supreme watercolorist, and in, in, in those, especially toward the end of her career, that 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 was a highly you know watercolor was really gaining ground. So even though I'm, I'm you know. It, from that school she was taught from, the Carlos Duran, they, they all use white, like, they use white all the time. Um, I'm wondering if she shied away from that because of the, uh, what the, you know, what the audience wants. You know, if audiences hear that, oh, you can't use white, you know, they'll hear that from one person and then it sticks. Oh. It's just like I, I was just, I was watching this, this doctor talk on YouTube about, um, about how good eggs are for you. But he said, you know, in the 60s, one doctor, I forgot, was it was on like NBC or something. He said that uh, eggs were just horrible. They're full of fat, and you, you don't want fat in your diet. And, um, and that stuck for gen like it, like I don't know, forty or fifty years before people figured out. Oh yeah, no, eggs are good for you. <laughs> I'm talking about the masses. I'm not talking about people who are really into nutrition. Here, but wow. Stuff like that. So one person comes along who's maybe an authority as a critic and says, oh no, you can't use white. That can really stick. Okay. Now, some of my branches, which are lighter up there, I'm going to have to get really dark behind them to get them to stand out. Or I might have to get a little bit lighter on them. We'll see. But they, it does. she does paint a very dark dark down here. For that dark, I'm using um, the Prussian blue and a little magenta in that, too. I'm going to do that to 
bring out some of these branches. Uh -huh. I can kind of scratch back into that. But you notice she doesn't show it all the white of the paper. Ooh, none. Not at all. She won't have any of those little gaps where you have little whites of the paper showing through. It's pretty. Pretty darn formal. And I understand why it, it, it can kill your values. She's not kind of a let it rip artist, you know? She's really working these things out. But it works for her, that's for sure. Close up to this, and I just do it like that. There we go. Then I can come back later and put a glaze over all the stuff in the foreground. A little bit lighter and cool. Whereas she comes up to this, which is a little more orange, it's starting to grab the light. A little bit of light left. And then up into here, she's getting a little bit more orange. Beautiful branches. Oh, good. And this, she's not a big dry brusher either. A little bit here and there, but I mean, she's she's not. That's just her her brand of watercolor. You know, she's just she likes those big statements. She, talk about an artist who's so fundamental. She, shape, value, color, and edge. She's a master of all of them. No question. You know, she gets that little orangey outline to really kind of work for her you know, around a lot of these things. I mean, I'm just going to hit a little bit of that orange around some of the outsides, like here. Just gets things to kind of blend into the background, like they're catching a little bit of light. And she gets a quite yellowy orange, too. Like they're illuminating, like like, little, like the lights. Thinning, you know, like like maybe they're thinning out as the lights going through them. That's a nice look. I 
just miss this area here. It comes to there, and there, there. Wow. Got this. I should have brought some of this blue. Well, I'll paint the blue behind the oak. The oak is very similar colors. Maybe it got a little more green. Yeah. On this one, yeah. um, all the um, watercolor um, vertical on her picture, um, or did it just look that one? You mean am I painting it vertically? No, it, did she? I think she did paint, paint these pretty vertical right up in here, and, and, uh -huh. and this one too, yeah. But she's using a lot of vertical strokes down here as well. Yeah, there's a lot of verticality in this. <laughs> now, that, it seems like that's probably the reason it's just so beautiful. She's really enhances the beauty of it. Yeah, she's really push, pushing the whole verticality of the scene. And what else? Oh. With some, um, more of this stuff after this dries and some little tones on her on the little house so we've got <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's, it's in shadow. And I've got these, uh, well, like lavender colors. That could be a little more. More blue in there. Um, 
And then over here, a little more blue under the roof, too. And on this side, that just gets. You know, it's kind of gray, but there's some warmth to it. And then here we get kind of a redder roof. I mean, you get a red roof with it. That's too red, so. I'll mute that down. And some green stuff, that, just the green grass, I just add a little onto it. Get too dark. That'll work. It's getting a little darker. It's pretty subtle back there. She gets some really beautiful blues back here too. That's, of course, way too dark. That's just ultramarine blue. Yeah, this is my my whole thing's got to be glazed down, which may be exactly how she did it. I do notice this starts off lighter, then it slowly gets a little bit darker as it goes down into shadow. I'm just using ultramarine blue on that. Oops. These down there, these darks I put down really thick so they're taking a lot of dry. But I think I gotta glaze a lot of this down a bit darker. Especially the road, which I knew I was gonna have to do. I'm just coming in with sort of, uh, again, red, red, yellow, and blue. A little bit bluer. Let's see how this is. Yeah. 
And let's go through. Can be a little bit bluer than that. Even more, wow, it's darker. down a little darker. Mostly blue though. It's ultramarine blue. Here too. Now even this needs to go darker. Wow. And that's quite, quite a bit darker. In the foreground. I'll put those strokes down vertically. Some of these, these oranges too. I wanna, I wanna deepen the value and darken it and gray a little bit. So I just, that's just blue. Here too, just blue. Greener in areas. They're quite orange. So for some of these, can we scratch them over their finger now? Oh, uh, maybe. You could do that approach. You could. Scratch little things out with your knife. An exacto knife. Make it a little bright, so then I'll hit it again with some um, color. Prior to their home. Huh? And also just use a little bit of white. And I can just 
add a little bit of color to it. So um, I could come back and glaze that down a little bit too. With any of these too, you can you can always just let them dry and glaze them down. So if you wanted to add a few in the background, you know, just, just a couple. Those down. Put some of these little separations in here, and you could just take some dark. Oh, a dark blue. I'm using ultramarine. You just hit some of those little divisions in your in your grasses. One of the big takeaways from her is look how she, she is, uh, she how she masses everything. She doesn't rely on detail. She masses. You don't see leaves. Show me a leaf. You see a couple of little touches here and there. It, she doesn't rely on ma uh, on um, details. She relies on big general things to pull the painting off. So she really conducts this thing. She's like the she's like a conductor of an orchestra. She's the way she conducts the color around here. It's not a it's not a slavey way to paint, you know. It's it's an artist totally in control. If she wants you to see something, you know, you're gonna notice, you know, you don't like first, you, you don't miss at all the verticality of, of this thing. She doesn't want you to miss it, and you won't miss it. But at the same time, you know, there's lots of things going on. But the way she handles it is, is so... Um, I don't know. Nonchalant is what we're going to We have a lot of French words in our vocabulary, don't we? Those French. One of my uh, students just went to Wales and she said, you know, you wouldn't believe how many different accents they have just in Wales. And she was like the South is very French sounding. The North is just weird. You got this little island 
Great Britain isn't isn't gigantic, you know, and they've got I don't know how many accents they have in that place, but it's crazy. French, French, French. Anyway, so a lot of these light things that I put in, well, I don't even know if I want to glaze those down now. Wow. I'm done, definitely down here I'll hit a little bit of glaze on them. A little bit bluer. Very easy to just glaze it down. Um, on some of these, I'm not really trying to make it uh, darker or anything, but I just want to enhance some of the color, so I'm going to take a little red and just little shots of red in there. Yeah, a little bit of that could be nice. Gosh. Did it still dry too long? Wow. Another glaze. What we got? Sometimes I have these really cut out edges um, to soften the edge. You can see she does that. Now I'm not sure if that's just her original drawing coming through or if she actually comes back and hits a little bit of something around the edges like this. I really love that though. It gives you these glowing edges. Who does this quite a bit is this artist Arthur Matthews, who is a great California artist too, and she studied under him. I was just reading. Somewhere. I wonder if maybe that was one of the things she liked about his work, or. I wonder if she's left-handed because you notice her signature leans to the left. Interesting. Because you know they're more creative than anyone. Just a
we think? Shall we start getting them in pretty soon here? I'm going to give you uh, a little time here. Um, how about 11.40, okay? I'll start critting at 11.40.
We have a few people. I think you're starting to get them in now, so I'll begin on these. 